Hi, my name is Mark Knutson. I'm an application engineer with Keysight Technologies working on PathWave system design software. And today we're going to take a give you an inside peek into what was added into System View 2020 platform update one version um, regarding overlapping subarrays and, and the ability to do custom mapping, which is uh, pretty powerful for phase array designers. Um, let's just so let's dive right into it. Um, why would you need, you know, what's the advantages of overlapping subarrays? Why would you need that? I mean, they're used by ESA phase array designers in a lot of different applications, aerospace defense, radar, electronic warfare, um, 5G communication kind of applications with phase antennas, beam, beam, beam steering type of applications. So why they're important is they provide very low side lobe levels and very low grading lobe levels over a very wide bandwidth, which on a battlefield especially, that's a, a very important to have. Um, it improves your robustness so you know in battle, always a good thing. Um, so today, it really boils down to a couple of different things. We're gonna basically show you what was added um, to three different parts in the data flow library and system view, the beam form or weight part, the splitter and the combiner. And um, we're gonna showcase that in an example that ships in system view. Um, actually, it's been shipping for a while, a while, but some things were added to showcase the overlapping custom mapping part of that. So we're gonna first look at the stock shipping custom mapping uh, example that ships in system view 2020 update one. And that'll be part one of this video. There'll also be a part two video where I, we do some extensions to this and look at different what if scenarios by looking at the projected beam with the overlapping subarrays, turn things on and off and see what happens. See if we can get an accurate ex, uh, representation of a beam. Um, just gives you a lot more what if power when you're doing system design. So um, just to round this out, System D 2020 update one um, added a lot of new features across the board. But again, the one we're gonna take, a, and you can kind of go through these or read the release notes on the on System V 2020 update one. But today we're gonna, uh, on this part one of two, we're gonna take a look at the, the shipping custom mapping example that does overlapping subarrays and show you, you know, give you a good context of how to use it. So we'll get into this, we'll just jump right into the tool in a second, but just wanted to give you a, I'm a pictorial kind of visual thinker, so hopefully you are too but I just wanted to kind of give you a visual context here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna dive into an example like this more cleanly in the in system view example, but let's say we have two different subarrays. Subarray one are the elements of a four by three array that are on and um, that are highlighted in blue. So elements one, two, three, five, six, seven, and then subarray two of this four by three array are the ones that are on at the same time, but and have overlapping elements with subarray one. Um, and those are 7, 8, 11, and 12. So this is the scenario we're gonna see and see what the impact is on the beam. So let's go to system view. Um, so if you wanted to get this example um, that I'm gonna use here today, you do help, um, example explorer, and you could search for like subarray as I did here, and then you can double click or select it and open it um, for the custom mapping example. Once you do, um, there's a lot of readme information and um, that you can see how to use the example. Or, you know, once you open it, the other thing I already, as I have here, you can go to the notes and that's in, and look at that. There's actually two different folders, a non-overlapping and an overlapped custom mapping folder. We're gonna look at the, um, the overlapping mapping today. So you can read through this on your own and get a, a little bit more detail of what's going on. Um, so, in the overlapping custom mapping folder, there's let's let's take a let's first kind of dive in one more level on what we're trying to show here. This is an example with two subarrays that we've created here in this stock example. Um, two four by three subarrays, subarray one, subarray two. Uh, subarray one uh, would have the elements in blue on, as I mentioned before, and subarray two, the green one would have the ones highlighted in green on, um, and and then there's they're all at the same time. And so we need to basically have a way to custom map that. So that's what we did here. Um, system view takes an element map um, type of, uh, map, this is set up in, Mat, in MATLAB script and I'll show you that in a sec. But basically you define a matrix or a vector um, that basically re uh, represents this 
two by 2012 um, matrix on the first column in blue, highlighted in blue is subarray one. And so um, everywhere you have a one, uh, that means the element's on one, two, three, four, as you can see, one, sorry, one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven. That's reflected in the first part of this um, element map. And then the second column, um, you see that it's 7, 8, 11, and 12, and you see that's reflected here. So that's how you establish a custom map. Let's show you where that's defined in MATLAB. So you go to the setup, and we defined here two subarrays on line one. We define the dimensions of our subarray one and our subarray two, and then we put all that into a matrix, and it ends up uh, culminating in uh, line 27 in the element map. And you can see that it's a one by 24 structure here um, is what we defined. And that, that is going to be used. Where is that going to be used? Well, let's show you that. So there's before we kind of walk through the design, there's three parts I mentioned in the data flow library and system view that have been updated to account for, to allow to do overlapping custom mapping of subarrays. So the first one up is the weight, the beamformer weights part. You can either pass theta phi or multiple user theta phi in from other parts of a design, or you can um, you can also uh, let's edit it. If you bring up the editor, if you go to the uh, beam configuration tab of the beam former parts, you can also hard code it in as we did here, or you can pass in MATLAB uh, vectors in also to do uh, to do it. But in our case here, we hard coded it as I mentioned, and so we have defined. User one is 90 degrees theta, and user one has a zero degree phi. User two has a 90 degree theta and a 90 degree phi. So that's the beam direction is controlled by that. Now, what was added before System V 2020 update one? We only had basically offered a sh two modes: shared array and subarray. And in, the, in that case, there was no ability to handle overlapping subarrays. So now we've broken it into three. And we're going to take a look today at the overlapped case, which is the new one. But you could also do a non-overlapping subarray like we did before. But today we're going to – so the, the, once you select overlapped subarrays, it also brings up the um, ability to enter a custom map. So that's where we t type in our MATLAB variable that we defined on the setup script, element map. And you're going to see the other two places that we added that are the splitter. Um, the data flow splitter part, splitter underscore M, M stands for matrix. So it's used to represent a phased array, um, uh, you know, 24 element phased array, the four by three phased arrays, and then they're overlapping, right? So we have two four by three phased arrays. So this, this, uh, this beam, basically this is doing the beam forming, and you see that we also have a mode for a custom overlapped and the element map. And we, the third place we added it is under the combiner. And the combiner kind of modeling the receiver is basically also has that custom overlap mode and an element map. So the, the, the advantage of doing that is that custom mapping is everything's working in synchronous. We're steering the beam and we're doing the beam forming, building it, receiving it. And then, so let, let's walk through this uh, example to see exactly what we're trying to accomplish. Um, first up, we have uh, two const constants. So we have 2 plus 3j and minus 1 minus 2j. Those are two different constants, but these could be modulated signals, radar, 5G signals, two different users. And we're going to basically use a, a pack bus um, part, matrix part, to combine those two. There's a lot of helpful balloon comments, by the way, so make use of those. So at this point, we, we've combined the two users into a matrix of two elements. Now we're going to basically start doing the beam forming. And as you notice here, um, column one is subarray one, user one. Column two here is uh, subarray two, user two. And when you do the custom element mapping that we did, you end up getting the user one scalar two plus three j being scaled by the loss of square root six, whereas um, minus one minus two j user coming in, information coming in is scaled by a loss of square root four. So then, um, as I mentioned, we use the beamformer weights part to basically steer the beam. We've defined it for two, uh, two, the two users, user one at um, 90 degrees theta, zero phi, user two at 90 degrees theta and phi, and um, that generates the uh, magnitude, uh, the, mag the magnitude, the tapers, 
and the phases that you need to steer the beam. In this case, we're just using an amplifier M, uh, matricized amplifier and data flow to, to, do, to represent all of those different uh, 24, you know, by two states, right? Because at the output of this, we have two four by three users um, that are overlapping. So we can put that in a two by uh, 12 by two matrix container, right? So at the output, you know, you have this representation. We could also add a phase shifter. We'll do that in the next demo. Um, but for now, it's good enough for a baseline. And then on the receiver side, we, we have the combiner. And then at the output of this, at the output sync called out, we should get out what we put in, the 2 plus 3J signal and the minus 1 minus 2J signal. So let's see if that's the case. So if we, if we run this very fast. We go to the output data set. And you go to, um, you go to the out. You, you select out in the data viewer and expand that. And there's two of them, one for user 1, one for user 2, subarray 1, subarray 2. So if I go to the user 1, subarray 1, um, you might have to hit this collapse controls if you don't have this to see it, but you can, by doing that, you can toggle that and, and change the format to see real imaginary. So if, so if I do see 2 plus 3J as expected. If I go to output 2 for the other subarray, change the magnitude to real uh, and imaginary again, I see the expected minus 1, minus 2. So that's part 1 of, of what I wanted to show you there, and, and part 2 will reconvene. And I'll and I'll show you how to go further and do some more what ifs on the on the projected far field beam.